In this video, I'm going to go through several examples of integrals in cylindrical and spherical coordinates. In each example, I'll focus mostly on the setup, since that is the source of the challenge. I've shown the outline of the steps of actually calculating the iterated integrals in all of these examples, but I'll move through these calculations quite quickly in the interest of focusing on the setup geometry. First, here is a region described by Cartesian equations. x squared plus y squared less than 4 means that the distance of the z-axis is bounded by 2. x squared plus y squared equals a constant is a circle in the x-y direction, so the x-axis runs through it. At any height z, this is the same circle out from the z-axis. But then I also restrict to the height z between 1 and 5, and the result is a solid cylinder of radius 2 located between z equals 1 and z equals 5. Now I want to integrate the function f of x, y, and z equals z square root x squared plus y squared over this region. The region is a cylinder, so I can use cylindrical coordinates. The angle goes all the way around, so I set the outside uh, as theta going from 0 to 2 pi. The radius goes from the z-axis 0 out to 2, so I set r from 0 to 2. And finally, the height is bounded between 1 and 5, so I set z from 1 to 5. Notice, as with all the iterated, iterated integrals, how I match the bounds to the variables at the end, inside to inside, and outside to outside. Then I change the function. z is still at z, and the square root of x squared plus y squared is exactly r, so the function becomes z times r, and finally I need to multiply by an r for the Jacobian term. The result is a separable integral, while all three integrals can be done individually as single variable integrals, and the result of all three multiplied together is 64 pi. Let me return to a problem I've done twice now and set it up yet again, the volume of a cone. I said earlier that the definition of volume was to integrate constant 1 over the object. And I can do that now. The cone has cylindrical type symmetry. I can set the angle bounds from 0 to 2 pi, since the points of the cone do go all the way around the circle. If the cone has height h, I can set the z bounds from 0 to h. However, then I need variable bounds for the radius. It needs to start at 0 and go out to capital R at the top of the cone. This is a fixed slope, so a line. And the equation of this line as a relationship between r and z is r equals capital Rz over h. When z equals 0, r equals 0, and when z equals h, r equals capital R. Therefore, this can serve as a bound for the radius. These three bounds describe the cone. The function for volume is just one, and I have to remember the r for the Jacobian for cylindrical coordinates. Then I do the integral. The theta integral is separable, and its value is just 2 pi. The r integral has to happen inside the z integral, since the r bounds depend on z. I do that integral and replace on the bounds to get this z integral. Then I finish by doing the z integral, evaluating on the bounds, and finally getting the familiar formula for the volume of a cone. Similar to a cone is a paraboloid, which I've roughly drawn here. It is also circularly symmetric, but a slice of it looks like a quadratic, not a v like a cone. The equation for this shape, if the height is h and the radius at the top is r, is z equals h over r, capital R squared times x squared plus y squared. And this is h r squared over capital R squared in cylindrical coordinates. I can take this as a lower bound for z. In the previous question, I set z and that had the radius depend on z. Here I'm doing the opposite. The height will depend on the radius. z will go from this edge to the top, which is at height h. The result of this is the bounds of theta from 0 to 2 pi, r from 0 to capital R, the largest radius to the top, and z from the locus h r squared over capital R squared to the top height h. I integrate the function 1 for the volume and include r for the Jacobian of cylindrical coordinates. Then the theta integral is again separable and gives 2 pi. I have to do the z integral first this time, which is shown here. And then I do the r integral, evaluated the bounds, and the result is 1 half h r squared pi. 
This is a bit larger than the one-third of the same for the cone, which makes sense since the quadratic shape of the paraboloid extends out earlier and takes up more volume than that of the cone. I can also do the volume of a sphere again. The sphere has constant bounds in spherical coordinates, the longitude from 0 to 2 pi, the colatitude from 0 to pi, and the radius from 0 to capital R, and volume is integrating 1. The Jacobian of spherical coordinates is r squared sine phi, so I need to put that in as well. Then this is also a separable integral, and I can do all three pieces independently. None of these three are difficult integrals, and I quickly recover the familiar 4 thirds pi r cubed for the sphere. This seems to be to be the cleanest and easiest way so far to calculate the volume of the sphere. Finally, for the last example in this video, I'll set up a more complicated shape. I want to consider a sphere of radius capital R centered at 0, 0 capital R, so sitting just above the xy plane. I also want to consider a cone with flare angle pi over 6, with its vertex at the origin pointing up. I want to calculate the volume of the intersection of these two, the portion of the sphere that lies within the cone. It's this sort of ice cream cone shape. In terms of the radius r, capital R, what is its volume? Well, here are those setup details again. The equation of the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z minus r squared equals r squared since its offset is in the z direction by r. I need an expression in spherical coordinates for this. I can get this expression by expanding the binomial z minus r squared, then the r squareds on both sides of the equation cancel, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is just little r squared in spherical coordinates. Therefore, the equation is r equals 2 capital R cosine phi. I can use this as the outer bound for the radius term. The radius will go from the origin out to this boundary to describe the offset sphere. Then the cone. Thankfully, the cone matches up very nicely with spherical coordinates. A cone with its vertex at the origin pointing up is precisely the figure where phi is constant. I said the flare angle was pi over 6, so I can take phi from 0, starting at the z-axis, going down to pi over 6. The shape goes all around the horizontal circle, so theta from 0 to 2 pi is still good. This gives me three bounds I need to set up the integral. Here is that integral. I am integrating 1 for volume, but I include the Jacobian for spherical coordinates, of course. The theta integral is again separable and gives 2 pi, but I have to do the radius integral inside the phi integral since the bounds of r depend on phi. I do so, an evaluation on the bounds to get the phi integral. A nice substitution works for this phi integral. With this antiderivative, finally I evaluate on the bounds to get the volume. The volume of the whole sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Here I have 7 twelfths pi r cubed. 7 twelfths is a little less than half of 4 thirds, which makes sense since this is an ice cream cone shape that looks like it might take up slightly less than half the total volume of the sphere. 